video, I'm gonna show you how to make an amazing anti-inflammatory uh, tea with Amazonian uh, Plantes Maestras. Uh, most of these plants are ayahuasca admixture plants, but they're also used on their own for their medicinal qualities. Uh, there's a lot more going on with all of these plants besides just inflammation, but that's primarily what I'm taking them for. And at the root of many different illnesses, of course, is inflammation of different kinds. And if you're on any kind of spiritual um, journey or even for just any person really, neuroinflammation is kind of an overlooked problem. And, you know, we, we need uh, for our organs not to be inflamed so that they can function properly and absorb nutrients and, um, and in the case of the brain, so it can work fluidly. So let's talk about the plants. Uh, first in the pot, I have a bunch of guayusa leaves. Guayusa is a holly tree, one of four that contains um, caffeine. It's full of antioxidants. The quichua use it uh, every morning to drink a bunch. The women all get together and they drink a bunch of guayusa. Uh, they use it for lucid dreaming. Um, the Havaro Shuar people uh, have a ritual where every morning they'll drink a ton of guayusa so much that they vomit. Uh, it's with the same purpose of uh, an ayahuasca uh, cleansing purge um, to clean out the intestines and to, to release all of the negative stuff that we're carrying around with us. And so uh, the caffeine and the flavor and the antioxidants, that's our basis, the guayusa. Um, and then uh, for flavor and also for inflammation, it's also said to be good for diabetes and a whole host of other things. Mostly I use it for flavor. Uh, leaves from the cinnamon tree, absolutely fantastic taste and smell. Uh, they're actually a little bit sweet right off the tree. Um, and then I have this wild ginger, which is, you'll notice a little bit smaller than the store-bought kind. It's a little bit more potent. I've already ground some up for the purposes of the video. And then we have turmeric, which is actually the only plant that uh, is not endogenous to the Amazon. Uh, it's not really endogenous to anywhere. It doesn't uh, reproduce by seed, but it is ubiquitously available here everywhere. So. Um, I've included it because it's a very powerful um, anti-inflammatory, as is the, the, the ginger. And the ginger, of course, aids in digestion and has a whole uh, bunch of other associated uh, medical benefits. And then I have leaves from, um, from an ayahuasca vine. And this is not enough to have a psychoactive effect, but the harmalas uh, in the leaves are going to help with neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Uh, there are compounds in the ayahuasca vine that are also extremely good for inflammation. And uh, this is just generally going to encourage a feeling of connection to uh, the world around us. And um, it's going to assist in uh, communications between different regions of the brain, which I think is something that is absolutely essential for us to, to focus on developing um, so that we're not so automatic in our behaviors. And so probably the most interesting is this one. Rabo de Mono um, means tail of the monkey in Spanish and it's like a large parasitical plant, a big mound, I'll put a clip. This crazy mess of a plant here is a medicinal plant I have not been able to identify. I can't find it online. Uh, it's very, very strange. It's furry. It's called Rabo de Mono. That's what the um, Quechua people call it. And the first time I've seen it, I guess it's parasitical. Uh, and it's just this mass of furry. It does, it feels like monkey hair. And then inside it's kind of spongy. Um, I'm really curious to find out what this, what plant, what this plant actually is. And so, uh, Rabo de Mono, um, I have not been able to find what it is. Uh, the, I, there, you get nothing if you Google it. And so if anyone knows what this plant actually is called, I would be really interested to know. Um, I'm on a mission to discover. And it is used by the Quechua primarily for prostate, but of course it has anti-inflammatory and immune boosting properties. All of these plants are basically adaptogens. So we can have a look at the inside, which is really interesting. And also the Quechua woman that 
told me how to prepare this, uh, you know, said that it's only necessary to split it in half. And the reason I think is that it's not very hard. This, um, the stuff inside is kind of almost like a pith. It's very, very soft, like a cucumber, I guess, would be a good comparison. And so we'll use maybe about this much of this plant cut into halves like this. And so this plant is actually a tree. This is some pieces of the bark. Uh, it's called Chuchawasi, and it is Quechua for um, trembling back because it's used a lot for back pain. It's also used for diarrhea. Uh, it's really a component of just about every medicinal blend that the Quechua make. Uh, it's used all throughout Peru as well. This is a, a very special um, plant, and again, of course, uh, inflammation. And then we have very well known, very powerful. Uh, this is definitely one of the admixture uh, ayahuasca, ayahuasca admixture plants. Um, it's very, very well known. It's a vine that has uh, claws that kind of look like cat's claws, hence the name. So this one, I'll just strip some pieces off so that it is a little bit more accessible. And I'll basically just make a layer that is about you know, one plant segment thick. Of course, you know, this ancestral medicine, uh, we're not working with specific units of any kind. It's uh, mostly intuitive and also just something you develop a feel for with practice. And so, Unitagato has a tremendous number of uh, medicinal uses. Uh, it's anti tumor, it is uh, anti-inflammatory, it boosts the immune system, um, it uh, cleans the kidneys and the liver. Uh, one shaman described it as letting a cat loose in the system that just uses its claws to drag out whatever's in there that uh, should not be. And so if you have parasites, uh, this probably will freak some people out. Mapacho tobacco, uh, which some of you might be saying are really you're gonna drink tobacco, but I don't use very much. Uh, it is very, very strong anti-parasite. And it is, uh, you know, really, really common for us to have at least minor problems with parasites, candida and whatever else. And so tobacco also is very, very grounding. Uh, it, it helps with emotional balance to a very strong degree. So I'll just use, you know, a couple little strips not enough to even make you vomit or anything. This is very palatable uh, tea. Actually, it tastes pretty good at the end of the day. Um, so that's enough tobacco. And also for flavor, we have these hibiscus flowers, the Florida Jamaica, really cool looking. And it kind of creates a fruit punch sort of flavor. Um, so once we have some water in there, I'll spritz some lemon, which helps to make the water more acidic and draw out uh, all the alkaloids and all the good stuff in the plants. And then I'll boil it once for about 30 minutes. And then after I consume the tea, I'll make it again and then consume that tea and then a third time. You can just continuously replenish it uh, at least three times and, and get some more tea. So. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon, where you can access my original magic course and secret streams uh, just about every week. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Wella wella spiritu ini, wella wella spiritu ini. Volare muy volare, muy volare muy en los cielitos y bien a vente. Vuela, vuela con dorcito, vuela, vuela con dorcito, volaré muy, volaré muy, volaré muy en los cielitos y bien adentro.
Sinchi, sinchi, me di, quini, sinchi, sinchi, ay, di, di, di. 